When we first met Kyle Maynard last January, he was a 17-year-old senior at Collins Hill High School in suburban Atlanta. He was also one of the top five wrestlers in the entire state in his weight class. But what really impressed us about Kyle Maynard was that he'd accomplished all this with no arms and no legs. The way Kyle Maynard sees things, it's not good enough to do well for a guy with no arms and no legs. His goal is simply to do well, period. Drive him, drive him! When we first saw him wrestle back in high school in the 103 pound weight class, the first word that came to mind was relentless. He never stops. And after a while, we started to feel sorry, not for the guy with no arms or legs, but for his opponent. That's the way I go after the guys, you know, I, I perpetually try to and uh, take them out. It may sound crazy, but it all makes perfect sense, as long as you understand one thing, that Kyle Maynard has never believed that there's anything wrong with him, nothing that hard work and the right attitude can't overcome. His father was a high school wrestler, and that's what got Kyle started in the sport. Go, go, go! You... But when the coach first saw him, he wasn't nearly as confident as Kyle was. And I saw him, I said to myself, boy, we really got a work cut out for us on this one here. Cliff Ramos is the head wrestling coach at Collins Hill and started working with Kyle and his father when Kyle was only in sixth grade. How did he do the first year? N not very well, to be honest with you. I didn't think he'd ever win a match. But, and he didn't win a match the first year. Was there a sense of, geez, I'm just terrible at this? Oh, yeah. You never thought about quitting? Quitting, you know, was definitely, I thought that crossed my mind in sixth grade. Which only makes sense. He had lost his first 35 matches. Well, how'd you turn it around? I uh, weight trained a lot, a ton. I used two and a half pound weights and put them on each arm. Got my form with a light weight and just kept moving up. And up? and up. During his senior year in high school, he lifted 240 pounds 23 times and won an unofficial World's Strongest Team competition in his weight class. 23 repetitions, how about a Kyle Minner? There's never been anybody like Kyle. I defy anybody anywhere to find a wrestler or an athlete who can compete against able-bodied competitors and do what he's done. When we first met Kyle, his record in Georgia's toughest high school wrestling division was 23 wins and eight losses. Kyle Maynard's disadvantages are obvious, but is it possible that he actually has an advantage, one that has nothing to do with his wrestling ability? Consider this. In a sport where the whole idea is to get a hold on your opponent, how do you grab a guy who has no arms and no legs? It may not be politically correct to ask, but is it possible that Kyle Maynard actually has an unfair advantage? I came in knowing he was really strong, stronger than me, just because he's just like one giant muscle. For Chris Neal, wrestling Maynard was, as you might imagine, unlike anything he'd ever experienced. When you're pinning someone, usually you have to reach underneath their arm, and since his arms are so much smaller, he can just pop them out. There are some advantages. Bud Hennibal is a Georgia high school referee who'd watched over the years as Kyle's opponents tried to figure him out. They're always trying to work at his head because I just don't think they know any better or there's any other way. But I'd say his disadvantages far outweigh the advantages. And he's still wrestling. He's on the school's intercollegiate club team. But the biggest changes have occurred away from the match. He's even done some modeling. This is part of an Abercrombie and Fitch campaign. Oh yeah, he's also taken up judo. Why not? Like you know that. <laughs> and it shouldn't surprise anyone either that just a few weeks ago, Kyle Maynard got his first belt in martial arts.